Hello, this is Jared Nimi with a mini lecture on hierarchical linear models from a Bayesian perspective. All right, so although we're going to talk about from a Bayesian perspective, we're going to initially uh, motivate the mixed effect models uh, from a non-Bayesian perspective, uh, just to make sure that everybody's up to speed on what these models mean. All right, so here is one version of a standard notation for mixed effect models. So we have some data Y. We have some fixed effects beta. I guess I should just write here. All right, so Y here is an n by 1 response vector. So we have n observations. And at this point, we're just thinking of the observation on each unit as being scalar. We have X is an n by P design matrix for the fixed effects. And therefore, beta itself is a P by 1 uh, unknown uh, parameter vector, but we're considering beta as being fixed. Z is an n by q design matrix now for the random effects. So u is a q by 1, and now there's a parameter vector, but these are the random effects, and therefore they're not fixed. Again, this is from a non Bayesian perspective. Finally, E itself is an n by 1 unknown error vector. So this right here is a standard formula uh, written in matrix notation for a mixed effect model. All right, so what are the assumptions under this model? I've just rewritten the model there for reference, but here are the main assumptions. That is, the expectation for the random effects and for the error terms are both zero. The variance for the random effects is some covariance matrix G. The, the covariance matrix for the error term is some covariance matrix R. And the covariance between the random effects and these error terms R is zero. Okay. Um, if Taking these assumptions uh, implies that the expectation for our data itself is x times beta. And the variance here is given by zg z prime plus r. And we're going to call that sigma y. So this is going to be the variance covariance matrix of our data set overall. All right, so this is the general formulation for the mixed effect model. Uh, we typically make a few more assumptions. Um, we often assume that the observations themselves, or the random, the error terms, uh, are independent. So R turns into a diagonal matrix with sigma squared E along the diagonal. We often also have a diagonal structure to the variance matrix for G, for U, sorry. Uh, we call that G, and typically this is something that's diagonal. Here I've written it as a diagonal of uh, this vector um, sigma squared u, although there could be elements that are repeating. Uh, for example, uh, if we only had one source of variability for these random effects, then we might have g just being sigma squared u times an identity, where the dimension of this identity just determine, is just determined by how many different um, individual units are coming for that single source of variability. Uh, this example will be more clear in the next mini lecture which talks about a particular example where this is exactly the assumption that we make. All right, and then the last thing that's often assumed uh, is that U and E themselves are normally distributed. Okay, so these two sides we're trying to motivate or trying to uh, show the standard uh, but very generic mixed effect model from a non-Bayesian perspective. And so now we'll move into, uh, actually, before we get there, we're going to now rewrite this whole model, but as sort of a standard linear regression model, right? So this looks like a standard linear regression model, except that we have this extra z u term here. And we're going to then combine uh, these two terms into a single term, and we're going to call that x tilde beta tilde. All right, so in order to do that, we have to define what x tilde and beta tilde are. Uh, you should maybe go ahead and try to do it yourself, uh, so you could pause right here and try it out. Uh, but the answer is then that x tilde is itself an n by p plus q design matrix, where we basically just uh, put together the x and the z components. Right, in R, this would be called column binding. All right, so this is, again, since both x and z have n rows, this is an n row matrix. X has P row, P columns, Z has Q columns, so X tilde is N by P plus Q. Alright, so then obviously beta tilde here is going to have to be a 
p plus q times one vector. And basically now we're just going to concatenate beta and u. Uh, and basically this time we're going to stack them on top of each other so that we have a p plus q times one vector. All right, so all we've done here is just to write the same generic uh, mixed effect model uh, as sort of a more standard linear regression model, right, where we have x tilde, beta tilde. All right, so why do we want to do that? All right, so we want to do that just to uh, show how this can be combined into a, a Bayesian analysis or how a Bayesian analysis falls out from this standard linear regression model. And so here now we've assumed normality for the data. So the data has mean x tilde, beta tilde, and a, after we've accounted for that, a variance covariance matrix R. And so in order to perform a Bayesian analysis, we obviously have to put a prior on our unknowns. And our unknowns at this point are beta tilde and R. For the purpose of this slide, we're just going to focus on the prior that we're putting on beta tilde and just say that, yes, there would be a prior on R. All right, so the prior for beta tilde that we're going to consider, we're going to be doing it in two parts. We're going to consider the two components. There's a beta component, these are the fixed effects, and there's a u component, the random effects. And so the priors that we assume here are both that they're normally distributed. Beta here has a prior with mean beta naught and variance covariance matrix sigma beta. U, on the other hand, has a mean of zero and a variance covariance matrix of g. All right, so at this point, um, and we're going to typically assume that these are independent. At this point, it seems, uh, from a Bayesian perspective, that maybe there's uh, no difference between these fixed effect betas and these random effects u. Right? We just assign a prior to both of them, uh, with the only exception being here, we plugged in a zero for the random effects, and we haven't done that for the fixed effects, even though, typically, we would put a zero in here for the fixed effects. So what, in fact, is the difference? The difference here, from a Bayesian perspective, is that for the fixed effects beta, when we go to do the uh, inference analysis, that when we go to estimate the parameters in the model using data, we're going to select a beta naught and a sigma beta and fix those for the entire analysis. And that sort of defines what we mean by a fixed effect from a Bayesian perspective. In contrast, for the random effects, u, we're going to go ahead and then assign a prior for g and learn about g in the course of our inference. So where no learning occurs for beta naught and sigma beta, there is learning about g. All right, and so perhaps it's clear now that what we've really done is created a hierarchical model for our random effects, right? It would be a not a hierarchical model if we just assigned a value for g and proceeded in the analysis. But instead, we're assigning a prior for g, and therefore we have a hierarchy. And so because this is a linear model, where we have these fixed effects uh, and these random effects, and then we put a prior on the variance term for the random effects, we're going to call this a hierarchical linear model. All right, so that's, this is the big uh, main side of the whole mini lecture, is just how a Bayesian thinks about fixed versus random effects, considering we treat every unknown in the model as being random. All right, so the key is fixed effects have a prior that's assigned, Whereas random effects, the prior is learned by putting uh, a hyper prior, let's say, on the variance covariance matrix here. All right, so these models are often referred to as mixed effect models or hierarchical linear models, sometimes as multi-level models. And again, just to reiterate uh, for a third or fourth time, perhaps, that the key here is that the parameters for the prior distribution for the fixed effects are not learned. They're just set whereas the priors for the random effects are themselves learned. All right, and this corresponds exactly to somebody doing a non-Bayesian analysis where they're learning the variance parameter for the random effects. It's just that a non-Bayesian doesn't assign a prior to that variance parameter. 